Hello dear Power Electronics guys, Jedi's and Padawans. So in this video um, I would like to make the first example of how to use PWM in FPGA and let's make it very simple. So at first we just uh, do the trailing edge PWM and then we'll try to simulate it and maybe even program FPGA and uh, take a look on the oscilloscope. Uh, let's see how the flow goes and uh, what we can do. As I said, let's make it very simple so everybody can repeat and follow. Uh, for those of you who are already very experienced with the FPGA, please don't judge me. Of course, there are definitely a lot of different ways to implement uh, the things and there are right ways and not right. And, but as I said, let's make it simple and that it works. Okay, let's begin. So I already opened the uh, Vivado. I have version uh, 2016. I don't know, for some reason, I just enjoy using uh, this particular version. I like the icons here and so on. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, uh, let's press the Alt-A uh, hotkey and it will open this window to create new sources. Uh, what we need to do, we need to create uh, design sources, which are VHDL files. Yeah, so we'll be working with VHDL, again, just because um, I enjoy personally working with VHDL more than Verilog or some other things, so just follow. Okay, so we select create file and here we select the VHDL. Let's call it PWM, as simple as that, or no, let's call it PWM carrier, because PWM itself is a block which can include many things. Here we create finish. So, um, here in this window we can define the head of the module. Basically we can create, uh, just imagine it as a black box, and we can define all of the signals coming in and going out. So obviously for the PWM we'll need some clock to get in, some clock to make the PWM running, not the PWM frequency, but the frequency of uh, increment of the triangle. Then we'll need some signal, so let's call it SIG IN and we'll make it as a bus, so we we'll make it uh, uh, let's say it's uh, 16 bits variable or 16 bits bus or whatever. So for this M must be most significant bit we select 15 and less significant bit we will choose 0. And then we'll need the carrier itself. So let's call it just carrier, make the direction out and also make it bus as 16 bits. Why 16? Well, uh, I have a really good DAC 16-bit DAC, so it will be much easier to implement it with 16-bit, put it through the DAC and look at the oscilloscope. Yep. Okay, so here we uh, press OK and wait until it will be created. So yeah, it's already created. Actually, we see that it's um, bold, the font here, which means that it is a top module, so basically main. Now we have only one, so this is why it's uh, top. Okay, let's open it up. We already see that uh, the template is already attached here and we don't need to define all of the things from scratch. So some standard libraries are given already, the head, although uh, which are um, the input signals and output signals they already defined because we did it before. And also the body is also here. So this is where we put everything. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, I want to create a process and uh, synchronize it with clock. Process is begin and process. So this is how it looks. Um, yeah, so there are several ways to work with the FPGA. So there are some uh, sequential processes or parallel operation. So when we define a process it becomes sequential. So everything we put here it uh, uh, works line by line like an algorithm like in microcontrollers or so on. And it's actually very useful. It uh, allows to get this thinking when working with FPGA like it's uh, MCU or something. Okay so what do we want to do in process? There is also another interesting thing we can create a condition and it is as simple as uh, if rising 
of falling edge of clock, then do something. Do something. Okay, this is actually a really good uh, construction because it means that every time we have rising edge of clock, we do some action. If there is no rising edge, if it's falling edge, for example, or clock is in some uh, state, either 1 or 0, it just skips this part. And it allows us uh, to operate on the clock edge, either rising or falling. So what we want to do, we want to increment some value every time we have rising edge. For this, uh, let's create a signal. And we call it carrier signal. And um, then we need to define the type of it. So because we need to increment it, we need some uh, type with which we can uh, make some mathematical operations. And uh, the types I like using the most are called uh, signed or unsigned. So here we'll be using signed type, sorry, unsigned. Here we'll be using unsigned type and uh, it should have the same number of bits as uh, our defined uh, inputs and outputs. And let's also give it some initial value, which would be um, zero. So one way we can do it uh, is we define that it's a uh, hex. So 16 bits, it's uh, four characters of hex and we give all of them zero. So for now, let's just use this. Okay, so right away we see that um, it shows us that there is some error and the error states that unsigned is not declared. What should we do? We should uh, include the library which uh, defines this unsigned or signed types. So this library is uh, actually this one. Uh, it is already there, just comment it and we just need to put it here and now the error is gone. Okay, so let's try to do something. What do we want, what we want to do? We want to say that every time we have rising edge of clock, we increase uh, car carrier signal by one. Let's save it. Okay, so this one is assignment to a signal. So yeah, which means that we assign carrier signal, the value of carrier signal plus one, every time we have rising edge of the clock. So I think we can simulate it right away. For this, we go to flow and run simulation. Now let's wait a little bit until it's all done and we will see the simulation. Okay, so. Let's restart, reset the simulation, run it, oops. Okay, U means on um, identified, which means that we need to define it. Um, okay, so we need to set some clock. We click right button of the mouse on the clock and then select force clock. Here the leading edge would be 1 and trailing 0 or vice versa. And then the other things keep the same. Okay, we can change the duty cycle. We don't care because we only need rising edge. We click OK. Again, restart and run for 2 milliseconds. Um, okay, so yeah. It seems uh, what happened actually, I defined or I forced the clock after two milliseconds, not exactly at zero. So let's redefine it again. We go to zero and let's force the clock from this point. Voila, we see something happening. Okay, signal in, as you remember, we didn't really do anything in the code. And the same for the carrier. What we did change was uh, carrier signal. And we see that there is something going on here. So we see that the value is changing. And if we increase it, we can also increase, uh, we can also see that the values are changing. Or we can take a look here. There's something going on. Okay, the easiest way to watch it changing is just to let it look like analog signal. 
So let's zoom it all out. Okay, we see that it indeed changes. Let's run a little bit more and yeah, we see that it overflows. So when it reaches the maximum of 16 bits, it becomes zero. And yeah, it seems pretty good. The only problem is that one period of the PWM lasts like uh, six milliseconds. It's very, very, very slow for the PWM. So yeah, and we don't really uh, manipulate the edge. So it just uh, becomes triangle because of the overflow. Okay, so let's save it. Let's save the uh, simulation parameter, simulation file. Click yes and close the simulation. And let's limit it. Let's say uh, I want to go it down every time it reaches 30,000. So for this I can create another if else condition. So let's say if carrier signal more or equal than 30,000. Actually, it's better. Yeah, 29999. Then we reset it. Okay, so I already showed you that we can use zero as this, or there is some other way we can just set others, which means all set all of the bits of this signal to zero. And uh, in most cases, this one is more useful and easier to use, actually. Okay, so every time our carrier reaches uh, 30,000, 30, we just need to reset it. But otherwise, we keep increasing. And don't forget to close if stat statement, if else statement. Okay, so at this point, we can simulate it again. think all of the parameters should be no they're not saved so yeah let's force our clock again let's make the period a little bit smaller and run it okay so we see something interesting what's going on 27 okay 29,000 yeah so we see what happened our clock repeats itself or resets after 29,000 something when it reaches 30,000 as we declared here. Yep, so I think for PWM it's fine. Also here maybe we can make it as 100 microsecond from now on. Also let's change the color. Let's make it um, magenta. Yeah, looks pretty good. So now let's do some actual PWM action, not the carrier itself. Let's close it up and it's closing. And now do some comparison. Okay, so we have this thing and the comparison we can do outside of the process or we can create another process for the comparison only. So, which means that they will be working in parallel. Process, clock, is, begin, and process. Again, if rising edge of the clock, then if signal in more than, more than the carrier signal, then uh, we need to create some PWM variable. So yeah, let's repeat it. PWM signal. For this one we just can use standard logic and set it as zero. So standard logic is just a boolean which is either zero or one. And it doesn't like something. Yeah, it, what it doesn't like that signal in a standard logic vector and we're comparing it with unsigned. Let's just change it and let's call it signal signal 
yeah let's keep it like this and then we can say that signal signal is actually unsigned signal in so let's come back to our rising edge if else condition and here we will say that if signal signal is more than carrier signal let's make pwm signal a lot of signals one semicolon otherwise let's call it zero um, and if and let's simulate again okay so we see here some of the things yeah we need to add pwm signal here probably <clears throat> probably we'll need to force the clock again and i think it should be enough but as you can see we also need to define the signal in which we can define as a constant not a clock constant and hex Okay, let's write something like in decimal, let's start with 1000. Yeah, you see, 1000 and forget the, this little tiny pulse. Okay, let's, let's force it further to 5000, also unsigned decimal. Now we can set it as 15,000, half of the signal, half of the carrier. So it's our 50% duty cycle PWM. Ooh, yeah, it's exactly 50%. And let's make it 25,000. And again, we need to use unsigned decimal. Or if you want to calculate it in hex, yeah, sure, you can do it. Okay, so first thing we see that it updated right away. It didn't wait until the end of the process, which um, is not really difficult to fix, but maybe we can do it the other time. So, yeah, looks really good. Uh, there is one more thing we need to do. First of all, we need to send all of the signals um, to the output and we can do it outside of the process so we just need to say that carrier this one the port carrier is standard logic vector of carrier signal so we convert the unsigned carrier signal to standard logic vector carrier and here let's add one more port which we call PWM out, the uh, K output and type standard logic. 